Welcome back to Sight Tech Intermountain. I wanted to do another training video, and in this video, it's gonna be a little bit of an explanation as to what 3D paving is. What I mean by 3D paving is 3D asphalt paving. I'm actually out here on a job site where we're doing, a customer of ours is doing asphalt 3D paving with a 1055 cap paver, running a shuttle buggy in the front of it. Now, I know that there's many different asphalt pavers that can be used in this process, but if you've never seen 3D paving or know, don't know much about it, I just wanted to do a quick explanation of how the paver is being controlled with the Trimble Technologies. This is a job site where the control points for the job site were set with GPS and then what's called digital leveled. They went through and leveled all the controls so that the vertical error that's generated when they're doing the control with the GPS is taken out. But this job site still has an actual job site design, an actual finished grade surface. It's got a crown in the middle and a finished grade surface, a design that could be loaded into any machine, right? Either an SVL, SVD, or a DSC for Earthworks. We just enter that into the asphalt paver, which I'll show you here in a minute, and it runs on a digital surface. The difference here is we're not using the GPS for the actual paver. We're using total stations. Here we have two SPS 930 total stations. They are running machine control and running the target on the top of the paver down there. Right now, this, this actual total station is actually in con contact with that paver down there via the radio and actually tracking the, uh, the target on the side or uh, the left side of the paver. As we run down through the runway here, each total station can only track so long before it's actually out of tolerance. And what I mean by that is through the length of this runway right here, we set up total stations all the way along the side here. And we go double, single, double, single. And what it is when I say double and single is the next total station down here is a single, and then it goes to a double. The singles, just and also the lower one, like we have set up right here, is the grade check gun. So this lower one right here will be a total station that as the paver catches up and actually passes us, the guy checking grade behind will walk over, grab this total station and connect to it, and then start checking grade. Because right now he can't actually check grade behind the paver from here on both sides. But the total station, the reason for the double single, double single, is because the current total station that's down there that's running the paver He's going to carry it out until he gets away from it about, we're going five to 600 feet. This total station is set up to where once that's out of range down there, this one is already looking at the paver coming and ready to, ready to turn into the promoted gun. So once we get within five to 600 feet, this one catches it like it has now, and it's going to carry us all the way through paving right here and it's gonna carry all the way down another five to 600 feet till it's out of range. And then the next machine control down there is gonna catch it and pick it up. So you have to have, unfortunately, quite a few total stations out here. Um, it's one of those things that takes quite a bit of money to have a lot of them, but you have to have a total station for the machine, which is this one tracking it only one at a time can actually be promoted to be the guidance one but it can have up to five total stations communicating it at once. And then you have to have all these singles right here to actually catch up and actually make it as the, check, the grade check gun as it goes along. So let's go ahead and continue to go down here and we'll check the model out. So each total station has to be set up and given its position on the job site where it's at. You can stand them anywhere you need. They're not GPS, so they have to be resectioned in or backsided in. So on the other side of the runway here where our control points are, we've set up these back sites with the 360 prisms right over the control points. So each total station, we go ahead and shoot up to three control points. You can get away with just two if you have to but hopefully you can average out between three control points in order for the individual total stations to have a position on the earth or on the job site. It's northing, easting, and elevations. 
Once they're ready to go, we back the paver up, and here they're taking off on a map they already did yesterday. So they're setting up down on those blocks to where they come off the map, just a hair higher. So once we're down on the map, we go to the screen, make sure that the total station there in the box is tracking us. So on the left side with the arrow there, it goes into a full search, quick search, and as soon as it hits tracking, we can go ahead and hit the promote button here to promote it. So it's in the top box there. It's the total station that's being used to take off. We take off manually until we actually hit grade. As you can see there, the cut, fill, and cut, fill right and left. We manually run it up until we hit that. Then here, we take the rover and actually set it on the mat on the left side where the mast is and actually have someone call out the actual elevation of the mat to do what's called bench in the paver. As soon as we do that, the right screen here is set to Sonic Tracer, and the left screen is set to 3D Box. So it's a 3D control on the left side and a match grade on the right side so that we make sure that the seam matches perfectly. Here you can see the three total stations that are currently set to this machine, the one tracking at 305 feet. There's one that was out there a ways and another one that's almost in, in ready. So on the side of the paver where the mast is, we have a slope sensor right here that actually does the pitch and lean of the mast. At the top, we've got the MT-900 that's actually picking up the total stations and the radio antenna that's up high to be able to pick up the radio. These are a floating screed, so anytime adjustments need to be made up or down, it simply raises or lowers this tow arm cylinder right here. It pulls up to, to basically float the screed up higher or angles it down. It's not like a grader where it makes an instant adjustment. It has to have time to make that adjustment. Component-wise, it's very basic. You just need the mast that has the MT-900 on the top that actually picks up the tracking from the total station and the radio also. The display, uh, there's two different types. The older system is the CB460 here that runs PCS900 paving control system. And the newer system is the Roadworks system that runs the TD520, just like it does on the Earthworks machines. So after you switch over to that, you have these two different types of displays here, the Roadworks on the top and the PCS on the bottom. The way the system works on the new one is you can track both sides at the exact same time. You have a little bit more integrated screen here, like the uh, Earthworks, which gives you different views. We can do a lot of different settings where we can record points. We can do lane guidance. We can run both mass at the same time, but with two separate total stations to control both sides if we need to, where the older system only runs one. The cat side is still the same, where it's 3D controlled on one side and a match grade on the other if it's matching. If it's a full open pass, it's just 3D and cross slope. Total stations can be quite a ways away, up high, away from vibration is the best, and you always have to have a guy checking grade to verify that we're hitting grade. So two different total stations at that point. Pretty new system, just came out. There's very few that are out there. Other than the display and that stuff, the other basics are still there. It's a floating screed. Got the mass on the top and the sensors on the bottom and a radio communication to the total stations that are up on the hillside. Now you're probably wondering why 3D pave? Well, the top one here shows you where if you run Sonic Tracers, you're basically matching grade. You're just le le laying a depth, a two inch, three inch, whatever it is, but you're matching grade. On the bottom here, you can see 3D paving doesn't follow a grade based on sonic tracers. It is literally laying a designed grade, no matter what. So with huge imperfections like you see right there, there are different ways that you can make specific models that adjust for the highs and lows, but usually most paving jobs lay a couple lifts. So a lot of the imperfections on the bottom there that you can see for the original grade can be taken out in the original pass to where the top pass can take out any error left at that point. So that's the reason for 3D paving is you get a nice ride, you get a designed surface, and you're not having to worry about it matching a grade that's no, no good. Um, 3D milling is another way to do this, is to 3D mill it. 
and then you just lay depth on it because at that point the grade is good enough.